truly insane how tall these beans are. Almost up to my chin. guys welcome back thanks for stopping in today uh, gonna be doing probably some more fungicide on the black turtle beans but before that we're gonna be hitting them with a different fungicide so I got to get it on the trailer loaded up ready to go dad's gonna do some field scouting make sure there's no bugs out there I personally don't think there will be so it'll just be another fungicide application all right looking for what I need here and I believe it's this then I got a left, leftover from last year, which ain't much. I need 50 gallons. It's gonna be tight. I think the majority of that fungicide is actually at the airport because they've been doing it on the corn. Probably have enough for today, but might need more to finish. So I got it up here and I calibrated my meter. So that should be good. But unfortunately I maybe only got five, maybe 10 gallons left in this bulk container. So before I strap it down, I'm going to put a block of wood right here so that it tilts forward so that it sucks out pretty much completely empty. And I don't have to do this in the field. All right, trailer's loaded up. Randy found 15 more gallons of it, so we are good, we're good. We have enough, maybe field scout to make sure we don't need to put any insecticide in, but like I said before, I don't think that's gonna be an issue, and it is already getting really, really humid. That's one thing about this summer, it hasn't been that humid this year, but I don't know, she's gonna crank up this week, I guess. Be 90s, hot and dry, perfect for pollinating, right? All right, I just got to the field. Eric should be shortly behind me. I got my batch mixed up, but I wanna walk out here and look at these things. They are still, once again, hands down, looking way better than any of our corn and soybeans. I think that's just due to dry conditions. These things thrive when it's drier. Uh, obviously, corn and soybeans, they need their water. Long story short, these things are looking perfect. All right, I'm off the headlands quite a ways here, trying to get a you know a better test sample here to show you guys. I'm gonna pull one up. This is what we're dealing with. Obviously, we got pods developing. We still have uh, a lot of blossoms there. I don't know if every one of those will make a pod, but as you can see right, right there, you can see the little baby ones. I think there's high potential for some big yields out here. With that being said, we do need rain also, just not tons of it. But I'm very satisfied with, with where they're at right now. It's time to get the, this fungicide on them for sure. Keep them healthy and strong. But hopefully, I think about five weeks, we have a high potential of being out here desiccating. Obviously, I don't know what's yet in store, but the calendar will say that, which is hard to believe that it's already start thinking about fall. And right across the road here, hang on, let me pull this out. We don't need him growing. See how big their root gets when they've been wounded by 
uh, chemical. But this is the field that we were double planting or interseeding in, different variety of soybeans. Just came out, check it out, see what we're seeing. Obviously, you can see a major height dip difference there. And then to this direction also, this is where the beans were all yellow and dying. Uh, still some that are not looking too healthy and obviously they're really, really short and, and not very good looking at all. But here's what it is. It's looking better than it was. At least maybe now we'll have some decent soybeans in these spots rather than maybe nothing. You can see the row is going everywhere, planted on top of each other. These are like solid seeded right here. But at least the yellowing is gone. Well, hello everyone. It's been a little while since I've held you, not to make it weird. Going back out to do some fungicide on the black beans. It's uh, two and a half weeks or so since we did the first pass. So just trying to keep them healthy. But it is, it is stupid hot this week. It's only Monday and it's gonna be bad. So fortunately, got the AC on. Got the AC seat going. As soon as my back gets sore, I have to turn on the massage seat. Uh, we'll stay comfy in here. I feel bad for Chet, the water boy. He'll be sweating. But at least he's got a nice trailer. Makes loading fast. I feel like I haven't been in here in a long time. There's actually cobwebs growing like off the windshield wiper and stuff. Tractor's been sitting. It almost feels like I'm going out for like the first pass of the spring and you're trying to remember how to run everything. Not quite that bad, but I don't know why. It's two weeks, it ain't that long. But we've been doing a lot of other stuff, so that's the way it works. And we're going to a field nice and close, just in case there's anything broken. Things like to break when uh, the equipment sits still, so. We're going to the closest field to the farm that has edibles on it. So if something breaks, the tools are right where we need them. See little water hem, actually quite big water hem. It's not good. This is the field I'm spraying. We had some escapees. Dang edibles, hard to control the weeds. We had guys that hire people to walk around, and pick weeds or hoe out weeds occasionally in this area. And need to hire those people. Can't kill them now. No chemical that we have that uh, is safe to use on the edibles is strong enough to kill that water hem. So that is going to be there till we combine. The problem is when it heads out to seed, it's gonna make millions of other ones for next year. There is a lot of benefit in actually going out and hand removing the weeds. Like the good old days, I, I guess. I hear you had a pretty fun one. It was a very good weekend. I got to meet my niece. She's adorable. It's the first baby of the next generation, my sister and her husband. She's she's a lot more calm than he is. A baby or my sister? Well, hopefully the oh. baby. But... <laughs> yeah. No, she's a cutie. Uh, I held her and she didn't cry, so I think I'm sad. Go easy on the big guns. I did. You got it it's there fragile. Either. Right, like the little head and everything. It's like, I gotta be careful with this, so. Uh, well, congratulations, Tori and Chad. Yeah. I'm happy for you guys. Yep. She's very healthy, too, so. Now, she's just gonna learn really bad habits from here. <laughs> That's what Mitch said. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what everyone thinks? <laughs> I'm getting out of here. I'm still laughing about that. Eric has an uncle. Well, he'll be a fun one. <laughs> All right, I pulled ahead. He's gonna blow his boom. Make sure no chemical leaked out of any rubber. So we really be careful on these black beans because you don't wanna, they get a sniff of chemical, the wrong chemical, and they're done. They're done! I feel like Toby already, and it's not even noon, hiding in the shade because it's gonna be hot. It's setting up for being the hottest week of the, the year, I would say. I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, you know, it's hot. So since it's so warm, I thought I'd mention to you guys these new uh, Brunt Costello pants that we've been trying out here. We have really liked them. They're actually super lightweight on a cooler day. 
it feels like you got air conditioned pants on. That's what I call them actually, is our air conditioned pants. Anyways, everyone around the farm's got a pair and we've been trying them out and they're by far the ones you grab when it's hot. So if you guys have any interest in picking up some of those, go to the link in the description and uh, click on Brunt Workwear. And check, out, check it out, try it out, I suggest it. We've been very satisfied with them. I'm grounding you after this load. You're grounded. Why, the AC's so nice in there. <laughs> I just called the agronomist. They said not to be spraying fungicide over 85 to 90 because the plant actually starts shutting down and won't accept it, so. We're down, we're shutting down. That's All what we right. get for being slow and lazy in the morning. <laughs> the biggest issue, truthfully, is just getting chemicals, different chemicals on there. It takes, oh, I suppose an hour. Depends on how much you got to do. Hour, hour and a half, just to get ready. Friggin' Brody's contraption here. <laughs> What we should have done was just made this a little bit taller and then we probably wouldn't even have needed that one there. Yeah. Next trailer. So something that we try to practice every time is uh, spraying out the booms um, on the road or in the yard or something uh, when we're going into an edible bean field because the crop, just making sure I'm not hitting a power line, the crop is very sensitive to a lot of the chemicals that we use in soybeans and corn. The edibles will die from those chemicals and even though we rinse out and maybe even spray it a whole day in edibles, when these booms sit overnight, eh, sometimes I've seen it where chemical that's maybe hung up in the rubber in the lines or somewhere in there will break free and when you spray the next morning you'll burn the crop for a little ways. So, I've got fungicide in here. I'm just gonna spray out a little bit on the road to make sure that when I get to the field, it's nothing but fungicide. Well, this is gonna be fun. We got some nice beans here. Down around the trees or in the low spots where the wind doesn't really hit the beans as bad. They're insane, they're as tall as soybeans. I can't wait to see a combine try to go through them. It's gonna be a very slow moving combine because the way it sits right now, we got hopefully some great yields there. The hilltops and whatnot, some other spots have definitely, you can see a little bit of drought stress to them. But look at this. You can barely see the rows. They're hitting the, <laughs> they're at least two steps up on, on the ladder. It's, it's beautiful. As long as nothing bad happens, knock on wood, I'm sure John Deere uses it somewhere in here. This will be fun this fall. We got some healthy, good looking beans here so far. Okay, this is interesting. I don't know if you can see that green line, different shades of green. Two different varieties here. They both look pretty good. Gonna have to check the yield monitor on this because that lighter green that I'm in right now does not exist in that variety and it stops in this variety as I get out of that lower elevation. So, very curious what that might be. Up on the hilltop here, it's more of the same shade of green. Um, I couldn't really tell driving by if one plant was doing a lot better than the other for variety, but uh, maybe you have to do a pod count or something on the plant and see how they're actually doing, because definitely a difference in color in the low spot with one variety, and I don't remember which variety is which. I'll have to look at my phone, but visual, visual inspection. Can't get out, gotta spray. It's getting too hot. Uh, we're gonna shut down after this, so. Just gonna get these acres done as quick as I can. Truly insane how tall these beans are. Almost up to my chin. Okay, I lied. But they're, uh, they're belt high, hip high. It's very nice. Um, we're getting a lot of little, I'll call them little white flies. They, they look like a mini grasshopper almost. And they fly so dang fast. To catch one, you end up squishing them into a pancake anyways, but I don't know what those are. And if we should have had insecticide in here. So, the good news is in like the soybean fields that I've walked through, aphids are not a problem yet. Hopefully won't become a problem. Uh, 
but there are some showing up so gonna have to keep watching them throughout the next week or two might have to try to kill them wanted to get out and look well I wrapped up that field and then drove like an hour and 20 minutes or something to the next field and we are just gonna leave the sprayer here because it is well over 85 degrees and that gets to be a little too hot for the plants that kind of shut down and doesn't do us a whole lot of good if we're spraying fungicide on the beans and they don't take it in so we moved the sprayer out here so that it's ready to go in the morning when hopefully it's a little cooler well I just got back to the farm Brody are you opening my stuff again no <laughs> no I mean yeah now these are my tools because you guys have lost or took them to pieces of equipment. That's bull. So I went nuts and I bought everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one. Show them the big one. Show them the big one. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> that is huge. <laughs> we needed that last winter so bad, building yeah. that trailer. Would have worked really good. So, if anyone touches my Nipex, they might get hurt. I got these from Acme hmm. Tool. Um, and I went for the Nipex brand because, well, number one, I love these ones right here. The Jaws seems to be the ones that always get grabbed and then taken places and then dropped and lost and in equipment. You can find Acme Tool on our website to pick up some Nip Nipex stuff. Yeah, Because I'm sure all your buddies and dads have lost everything. Hey, did you say those are mine for Christmas? No. Well, thank you. <laughs> this one here, this one's specially designed for... No, do that. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> there seems to be a leak on the pressure washer or something. No. It's a good thing we got this pan here. That's okay. So, we do pretty good on our maintenance on like all of our equipment. Only missed 18 services on this thing. Only missed 18 services on this power washer though. Apparently it needs grease, it needs oil changed, and dad was in getting some washer hose from the guys that sold it to us, and they're like, you guys maintaining that thing? We're like, maintain? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, so it's only been six years and the break in oil never got took out of it, so that should be good on it. Very good. I can tell the grease is. His hair got all over the place. <laughs> There's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll just guess. I guess it takes tractor motor oil. So hydraulic oil, right? <laughs> well, as long as there's something in there, I suppose. Okay. Now the funnel don't fit in the hole, so I don't know. It might start burping. You almost missed. I did. <laughs> oh, 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 it's gonna burp! Yeah, it's bubbling out everywhere. What joke. Okay, we're ready again. <laughs> I'll try to do more steady. Is that a core yet? <laughs> no, it's burping! <laughs> well, it wasn't a big job, but. We should be good for six years again, or eight. It looked pretty, hey. pretty ugly. Hey! I barely got this by the tips of my very tippy tip tips. Hey! What's the problem here? You're leaking water. Hello? Is this gonna drive? Watch your arm. <laughs> Another job successfully completed. So this has been kind of our project working on throughout the week when it gets warm in the afternoons and in between other important jobs and I don't know if you remember us talking about it at all last fall but this one was just pushing like the minute it would get dewy it would just start pushing you couldn't tilt the feeder house enough back you guys have seen the video where we lowered or lowered the rear of the combine raised the rear axle I just talked to Kibble wondering if there's any mechanical components that would be different between this one and the other one he uh, didn't think so. He's going to do some research on it. He did think that lowering the rear of the combine will help. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We're going to... We've done what we can do, I guess. He, he did mention to me to not 
recalibrate. Blah, blah. He did mention to me to not recalibrate the pitch four and a half of the feeder house because right now it's thinking it's tilted more towards the front of the combine and this will actually allow us to pitch it back more. So let's hope that that helps. It's the best that best advice I can or I've gotten. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you work better. It works fine during the day, but the minute the sun goes down, she starts pushing. Brody doesn't like that very much. He gets kind of cranky. Other than that, I think we're gonna call it a, a day here. Tomorrow we're gonna hit it hard right away in the morning to try to um, beat the heat because this whole week's supposed to be mid 90s. So we're gonna try and get that fungicide on them black beans. Maybe tomorrow, I don't know if we'll get them all done, but we're gonna get a majority of them done tomorrow. Yeah, so early morning, can't wait. We'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you watching. See ya.